everyone and welcome to this Mighty Civil webinar. Um, my name is Norbert Kovac and before starting the webinar itself I would like to inform you about Midas Laboratory or also known as MyLab. Now MyLab is launched for bridge engineers who wish to resolve their thirst for interactive learning of Midas software with the Midas technical support team. This regular training lab will provide bridge engineers with face-to-face -face tutoring on how to utilize Midas software for any bridge engineering project from creating nodes all the way up to modeling various types of bridges. With a simple click uh, to register for the session and a visit to our office in London, you will be all set to discover the features of Midas software. Now, in order for registering, all you need to do is just go to our, our website that is uk.midasuser.com and within there click on the training tab and upcoming courses. Within the upcoming courses you will see uh, the My, My Lab as well as the Midas Gen series and the Midas Civil series. So if you just go into My Lab and here if you scroll down you will see the details for each training session as well as you can register for these. Now, with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and I will hand over the session to our presenter. Thank you very much. Hi, welcome to this second series of uh, Eurocode series of webinars. Um, today's topic is Structural Steel Design of Bridges to Eurocodes. Uh, in the next 45 minutes, uh, I'll try to cover uh, some of the important aspects of uh, structural steel design and how you can use a finite element software like Midas Civil to optimize your steel uh, bridge design and uh, in extract the results that you uh, want. Okay, so today I'm going to cover uh, these topics which are displayed on the screen here. Um, we will start with first uh, just have a look at uh, what kind of uh, um, things we need to keep in mind while setting up the model for steel bridge design. In the previous webinar, we discussed about uh, different types of actions that we're going to put in the steel bridge. So I'm going, not going to go into um, the entire modeling part, uh, but just some important aspects where we can um, focus on things like construction stage analysis and um, load combinations, etc. And then we'll go straight into the design checks uh, where we'll look into the material properties, uh, ULS checks, um, fatigue, strength, uh, and then connection design, and finally ending with serviceability checks. Okay, so the first thing is uh, to set up the model for structure analysis so that we have the right set of elements and right uh, uh, set of loads in it uh, for us to get the results uh, on which we are going to perform the checks. So there are two ways we can model a structural steel bridge uh, for getting the design done in the software. The first one is can be a grillage model uh, where as you can see in the diagram shown here you have uh, the main st structural steel gutter elements modeled as line elements and then you have transversely uh, transversely spanning members uh, which act as cross girders. Uh, so the this type of model is usually done so as to you utilize the automated steel code checks which are there in uh, Midas Civil um, and then th we have the plate model which is more suitable for uh, detailed checks like buckling analysis finite element uh, stress checks and also like steel box girder bridges where we want to focus on local flange and web effects okay so let's have a look at few models and where we'll just uh, go through some key points uh, to be uh, noted uh, before we run the analysis. So this is a typical U-frame type of structure. Uh, it's a highway bridge. Uh, so you have got uh, two main girders which are I sections. Okay, so they are having a tapered profile, you can see from the front elevation. Okay, and let me just go through the construction stages that I have modeled here. For detailed analysis of, uh, a detailed study of how to uh, 
uh, model the construction stages in the software uh, you can refer to other Midas videos so uh, here we have the first stage where there is only steel steel work which has been uh, put in uh, you have the cross girders the trimmer beams at the ends and the main girders then uh, stage 2 is just a stage where we have uh, put in some loads so some construction loads and the steel deck plate okay and then we have got stage 3 uh, where the wet concrete uh, the slab has been poured okay and then finally we have stage 4 where the cross girders um, become composite with the deck so we have put in composite properties which can be seen over here so this is a way we define composite uh, sections in Midas okay and that's how the entire uh, structural behavior has been assumed uh, then live loads have been uh, applied on the structure uh, which is for this case is load model 1 and is special vehicle 100 so just for simplicity purpose, I have not shown the live loads over here, um, but you can refer to other videos for live load application. Okay, uh, now uh, here we need to keep few things in mind like uh, usually for these kind of tapered sections because our, our objective is to design the structure using uh, the Midas Civil uh, so that uh, we can save some uh, post processing time uh, that is uh, which uh, we normally do using excel sheets and hand calculations uh, because uh, to initially do um, a check on the member sizes we would like to have um, an, an easier way of or quicker way to design the, st uh, the steel sections uh, so that we can then move on to maybe let's say uh, a second stage of uh, checking using more detailed hand calcs and more uh, connection checks etc. So uh, to be able to uh, allow the software to conduct a full blown uh, steel design um, we need to model everything as a database type of uh, uh, section like uh, for example if you have uh, let's say um, an asymmetric kind of I section um, what I would uh, suggest is that you can um, model it as a symmetric I section as shown here which I'll just um, open up from the works tree so this kind of an I section you can model uh, doesn't matter what offset you put in uh, for the tapered sections like here um, normally what we would do is we would use a tapered group so we'll create a smooth tapered profile automatically from the software but for the purpose of designing it with uh, in the software itself we need to keep in mind that uh, each and every element has a, a prismatic type of uh, section which means that we need to break it down into several elements and sections um, which is not very uh, difficult because uh, we can always use the convert uh, into tapered section feature over here okay which will break it down into individual tapered section and then which can be uh, further uh, changed into uh, prismatic sections by, by using the user uh, database tab okay so uh, the key thing is that the sections should be from the database uh, of the software which are in the DB user tab so all these sections can be automatically designed and uh, they should not be tapered they should be prismatic for the design so if you have these things uh, in control in this while modeling uh, we can then perform easily um, uh, the code checks uh, and of course not to mention the material type should be steel so when we are into add material we must make sure that the type of design is selected as steel and then we can select any type of material we want doesn't matter okay uh, and lastly uh, when we are doing the combinations like results load combinations uh, need to make sure that we have got the combinations in steel design okay so uh, when I'm when I'm saying uh, let's say just moving on to post CS okay so we have 
say ULS and SLS combinations. Uh, we need to make sure that we have all the combinations marked correctly as strength or serviceability based on the type of combination. Okay, the factors are taken from uh, should be taken from the Eurocode UK National Annex uh, for the design, which is Eurocode Zero National Annex. Uh, for dead loads, usually we for steel dead loads we usually have 1.2. Uh, for concrete uh, it's 1.35 and then creep shrinkage and then we have uh, uh, for live load a uh, few um, other load factors for different for traf road traffic and rail traffic okay so this this is the way we define um, the load combinations in the steel design tab and then we can perform the design using the design feature which i'll talk about in the next few slides which is our main topic of the presentation Okay, next thing is plate model and uh, where we use it and how we can use the plate model to generate uh, our design. So let's have a look. Uh, so I'm just uh, opening up a uh, plate model over here. Right, so I've got the same U-frame bridge now modeled as plates. Uh, we would normally do this for, um, say, a buckling analysis where we want to check the lateral torsion buckling of, of the main girder top flange. So uh, it's not very different from how the way we have modeled the grillage. The only difference is that uh, the main girders have been modeled as plate elements. Cross girders can be kept as line beam elements only. So we've got all the cross girders as line beam elements and the deck of course uh, again is a plate so that's the deck modeled as plate elements uh, the offsets uh, need to be careful about key while uh, modeling the offsets so make sure that all the section offsets are correct and all the stiffness have been modeled Uh, just to give you an idea, we use the extrude fun uh, functions, extrude line to plate element to generate all these plate elements here. Then uh, <coughs> uh, we need to make sure that we have got uh, the node points at every location that we want it. So all the splices, all the joints, wherever the section is changing, we need to have node points, plate elements over there to capture the stresses. All right, so uh, going back uh, to the main uh, slides. All right, so let's go into more depth and we'll talk about material properties of steel. So Eurocode 3 uh, gives some guidelines on the different uh, material properties that we can use for uh, our steel uh, gutter checks. So like you can see in the table, uh, for thickness less than 40 millimeters, we use a certain grade of steel, uh, which is a certain strength of steel for design, say 350, S355, commonly used structural steel grade. And for flanges um, more than 40 millimeters, we use 335 as the uh, yield strength. Okay. Then on the right hand side, you have the partial factors. The partial factors are used um, in the limit state design. Uh, for different types of checks so you've got um, for the calculation of resistance we've got one set of uh, partial factors then for connections there is another set okay uh, and again these partial factors need to be taken from the national annex so what I have shown here uh, uh, basically shows the UK national annex uh, partial safety factors Okay, so before going to the next portion, which is classification of sections, let me show you uh, in the software itself where we actually define these uh, partial factors. So I'm again going back to my previous model, which is the uh, the U-frame model with grillage. 
so let's go to the design feature design steel design and we have the design code here we select euro code from uh, this tab okay and then the next thing is partial safety factors so this is where we in input uh, partial safety factors of course uh, if by default they are all as per euro code 3 then modify steel factors steel materials so this is where we select the material property of steel suppose you have used some user defined uh, property for steel then here we just uh, uh, change those properties and assign um, the right grade of steel for the check uh, if you can see here you will find there are two types of yield strength uh, I just mentioned in the slide that for different thicknesses Eurocode mentions different uh, value of uh, yield strength to be used so that's been shown here you can of course edit this by selecting um, none over here and just modifying these values okay right now uh, for the steel design in Eurocode we have got uh, something called a classification of sections uh, now why the sections are classified into four categories the reason is that um, steel by nature uh, it's got um, an yield strength and then it's got a um, high ductility ratio which allows it to rupture after gaining some strain value okay so based on that uh, property of steel and based on how uh, and uh, how easily it can buckle uh, the various sections have been uh, classified into four categories okay? first one is uh, class one so class one is you can see in the graph here uh, that is after yielding it has got sufficient rotation capacity to form a plastic hinge okay without reduction in any strength okay so th that's uh, this particular graph you can see then the second one is class two which can again after yielding it can reach uh, its plastic limit but it is rotated restricted by its rotation capacity because it buckles locally okay so before uh, going to the full extent it buckles then class 3 uh, is that uh, before reaching its plastic uh, um, before it can develop the plastic uh, hinge um, it basically buckles so just after reaching the yield strength uh, it is susceptible to local buckling okay and then the last category is class 4 which before reaching the yield stress itself buckles locally okay the way the uh, section can be classified dip, uh, depends on um, which is the lowest uh, uh, component uh, or the lowest class uh, in all the components of a steel section for example you have uh, a flange and web behaving differently so we will first classify the flange and the web separately uh, again flange and web can be uh, flanges can be two types you can have a flange which is an outstand type of flange like in an eye gutter or you can have a flange which is an internal kind of flange like in the case of a box section if you see the bottom flange uh, it's an internal flange so based on uh, the the rules specified in Eurocode we will identify that which class the flange or web belongs to and the worst class out of those will determine the class of the section so in this table you can see let's say if you have to identify uh, let's say you have a class uh, 3 web and you've got a flange which is uh, which is class uh, which is class 2 okay so your section will still be a class 3 section because the worst component the web is having class 3 okay now the rules specified in Eurocode are given in table 5.2 Eurocode 3 so we we just compare the uh, for example the outstand flanges we compare the outstand length or width divided by the thickness I uh, compare it with a certain value in Eurocode uh, and if it falls under one of these categories in the table we classify it as class 1 2 or 3 then for internal compression parts we have another set of table which we can refer to okay now once uh, we have identified which class the section lies into uh, we can then move on to the different checks that are going to be performed on one class 1 2 3 and 4 
for class uh, 4 specially we have to take into consideration what is called as effective width okay. now effective width of a steel section uh, is basically uh, due to two reasons one is the shear lag effect which we see commonly for concrete bridges as well um, this is usually common for wide flanges wide box girders so uh, if you have a wide box girders then uh, there are some rules set in Eurocode depending on the span of the uh, bridge we can, we can uh, identify the effective width of the section and use it for our stress calculation in after analysis but usually we don't face uh, this problem for plate girders which I'm going to take as an example here for U frame for the U frame bridge okay for plate girders we be, we have the problem of plate buckling uh, especially for class 4 sections because most bridge sections will have um, a, a larger depth in compression and if you have a very high compression and uh, large depth to thickness ratios then uh, it is susceptible to local buckling okay. and in such cases uh, we can't use the entire or the section cannot utilize the entire cap, uh, st uh, width uh, or, or, or the or the depth of the web uh, to for the stiffness or the resistance so that's why we need to calculate the effective width of the section that is actually going to participate in uh, acting as a resistance to uh, the forces applied okay so eurocode uh, 315 uh, gives some guidelines on how to calculate the effective width okay it depends on the uh, stress that has been applied on the structure since uh, the uh, uh, the class four section uh, before reaching its elastic limit actually buckles, so we use the elastic stress distribution to calculate the effective width. So as shown here for internal compression members, uh, we have a table. Uh, there is a psi factor which is sigma two upon sigma one, uh, the two extreme uh, um, ends of the web. The stresses stress ratio we calculate it, and then based on that we have a buckling factor we use that buckling factor in these equations and we calculate b effective okay uh, we remove that uh, the unshaded area here and calculate this uh, stiffness again so whatever centroid uh, or area or inertia we get we use those values for our stress calculations okay and calculation of moment resistance so here if you see in the figure you have a shift in the neutral axis because of the new effective width so because of this shift there will be some extra moments generated um, um, by using the simple calculation of uh, axial force multiplied by the eccentricity the difference between the two centroidal axis okay so this thing has to be kept in mind this moment has to be considered during calculation of um, our uh, moment of resistance Okay. Similarly, we do it for outstand compression elements too, okay, uh, like our flanges. Okay, so uh, we move on to the ULS checks now. So after ca classifying the correct section, uh, we now go into the checks. So first type of check is a uh, uh, simple axial uh, force check. Uh, it can be a, either a tension member or compression member. Uh, for uh, tension members, use the simple um, area multiplied by um, the yield strength. In case of uh, uh, bolted members or if you have uh, rivets, then we calculate the net area. So if you have fasteners or connections uh, on, a, on a plate, uh, the net area is used. Again, the way we calculate net area is uh, it is given in Eurocode 3 uh, part 1 then compression members uh, compression members uh, uh, we, we classify as class 1 2 or 3 because again uh, we have to check for local buckling effect or not um, that's why uh, if it is falls under class uh, 1 2 or 3 we use the full gross area multiplied by the strength uh, if it is in class 4 then we use the effective area uh, which we just discussed in the previous slide uh, to calculate the compression uh, resistance okay then uh, we have bending moment check uh, so 
this is a simple uh, multiplication of our uh, section modulus multiplied by the yield uh, strength. Uh, in case of class 1 or 2, we will use the plastic section for calculating uh, bending moment resistance. Uh, and in case of class 3, we use the elastic moment resistance. In some cases, we can also uh, convert a class 3 section into a class 2 sections by using uh, uh, the hole in the web analogy, uh, where we can we reduce the effective, uh, I mean, the de depth of uh, web by removing a part of the section, just similar to the way we do in class 4 section. Uh, and we can treat that uh, equivalent section as a class 2 section and get a more higher resistance out of it uh, by using the plastic capacity. Then a uh, class 4 section, uh, again we use the effective section modulus. Uh, we need to also make sure that uh, we ca uh, take into account uh, the moments that, uh, that are generated due to centroid axis shift uh, while we are checking the bending moment. Okay? So if the applied bending moment is less than these values, then the check is okay. Right. So before going to the shear, let's see uh, one example of how uh, the design has been uh, done using um, simple FE package like Midas Civil. Okay, so we'll use the same example over here. So we've got the main gutters which are going to design. So our main focus is here. I'm going to just select them. Okay, and just activate these main gutters so that uh, it's easy to view it. Okay, so I've selected all these main gutters. Now, before uh, going to the design, I uh, need to make sure that few of the settings are correct. For example, uh, we've got uh, the length, effective length for uh, slenderness calculation and also for um, buckling resistance check calculation. So this unbraced length has to be put because uh, the software doesn't know that uh, this entire set of elements acts as one beam uh, and hence cannot calculate the effective width automatically, effective length automatically. So either we define this as a member. So we have an option where we can do member assignment, select all these elements and apply. So this will be treated as a member or we can just uh, select all these elements and assign an effect and a length. So I usually prefer this option more uh, defining unbraced because it gives more control uh, to the user to uh, specify their the correct effective length in case of a column or a beam, whatever. So let's say if it's uh, just measuring the distance over here, say 50, so let's say 52 meters. And then the length required for lateral torsion buckling check. So in this software, we can do lateral torsion buckling check for uh, uh, for a doubly symmetric uh, section. So it can be a doubly symmetric I section, uh, uh, which we have in this case. Uh, we can use the automated feature for doing lateral torsion buckling check. Although we'll cover in the few slides later that uh, we normally don't tend to rely on code based uh, lateral torsion buckling check because of some limitations in the euro code. So uh, I'll just put some uh, the value the length here and apply. Okay. And then we move on to steel design. So I've selected all these elements and moving on to steel design. Uh, we have selected steel material giving in some uh, serviceability parameters like um, the deflection control for beams and deflection control for columns. This is essentially uh, the terminology used in frame design in a structural steel frame building. Uh, but we can use the same uh, feature for deflection check for our steel bridges. Okay, so I'll just apply this. Okay, and then we have a feature called equivalent moment factor, which again is uh, used for calculating the um, the corrected moment uh, based on imperfection and second order effects. Um, this is given in more detail in Annex 
annex A of uh, Eurocode 3 1 um, which again uh, the software calculates automatically or we can also input by calculating it from the table given in annex A okay so for the moment I'll just select calculate by program okay then uh, still is then uh, then we define the transverse stiffener of the section so transverse stiffener uh, of the section is used in the shear check okay uh, now what I'll do here is uh, you can just select the elements select some of the main colors and define the pitch or the spacing of the transverse stiffener which I have entered as 1.5 meters over here okay and it will be considered in the analysis for checking the shear of the shear resistance of the section and you click on steel code check so it runs the check okay and denotes uh, whichever member is failing or passing the check so we have a few uh, members which are failing a few which are passing blue means it's passing the check red so one of the ones that are failing okay so let's look at one of the one of these elements okay so so let me pick one over here and look at the detailed result so you can look at the summary using the graphic option okay which will give you a summary of where it is failing it's saying bending resistance is a problem okay so we'll later on look at wha what exactly in bending resistance is causing the problem right. and then detail okay this is where you this this is what you exactly want for uh, uh, to include in your uh, for including in your reports uh, that is the full step by step uh, calculation as per Eurocode okay so I was going to talk about the classification of sections so this is where uh, your section properties are calculated then the effective lengths are written over here forces and moments that are calculated from the analysis Okay, so the sign conventions for stress and actual force and then the classification starts so left off flange um, using table 5.2 you've got class 3 semi-compact class 3 for the other flange as well bottom flange is not considered because uh, being a simply supported section bottom flanges are all in tension then we move on to class the web which is the most critical one over here because it gives you a class 4 slender so now it's since it's class 4 uh, effective width needs to be calculated so B effective is being calculated for this section okay so effective cross section properties of web is calculated okay as mentioned earlier uh, it Eurocode 3 part 1 5 table 4.1 is used here okay so once uh, the effective cross section properties are calculated uh, section modulus is calculated and this is then multiplied with this yield strength to calculate the moment resistance okay so uh, normally we would do the analysis uh, check for major axis but because it's a finite element software it calculates the minor axis forces as well um, hence the reason why we are seeing a check about minor axis okay which is not very governing in this case um, but uh, let's look at the uh, the next uh, range of checks that we are concerned here okay so check for axial resistance so it checks the slenderness ratio of the actual compression member uh, which is okay uh, and uh, then actual compressive resistance which uses the effective area because it's a class 4 section okay and it's okay right then it moves on to um, buckling and shear resistance we'll cover buckling resistance in the next few slides uh, which is just simple uh, uh, the Euler buckling okay and uh, going into the buckling curves which are mentioned in the codes um, and then check uh, checking shear resistance so bending resistance was the one which I was I was going to talk to you about so bending moment resistance about major and minor axis um, W effective which is the 
section modulus multiplied by shear strength gives you the bending resistance over here. Okay, so going back to the presentation, shear. Now, shear resistance has two parts in the cal in the Euro code. One is uh, considering the plastic shear resistance, which is simple uh, shear area multiplied by our uh, shear strength uh, of the uh, of the section. And the other is uh, considering shear buckling of the web. So, to the shear uh, buckling phenomenon is considered when uh, this criteria is fulfilled, uh, the one shown here, which is uh, the ratio of uh, the depth of the web divided by the thickness of the web, which is compared with um, the the value shown here, 72 upon eta times epsilon for an unstiffened web, and this value for a stiffened web. Okay. Now. Uh, in, in the software, uh, this uh, there are a few assumptions that we uh, make for calculating uh, the web shear buckling resistance. Number one is that uh, for calculating this shear web, web buckling uh, resistance, this formula is used, uh, which is shown over here. VBWRD is equal to chi uh, into uh, the shear strength and area shear area of the web. Now, this reduction factor is calculated from the curve over here, which is uh, whose x axis is basically the slenderness ratio. Um, everything revolves around this the way we calculate slenderness ratio. Uh, the slenderness ratio depends on the type of the stiffener that we have used at the ends. So, either it can be a uh, a case where no end post has been used or a rigid end post case where you have a intermediate stiffener and a bearing stiffener uh, which are very close by and then a non-rigid end post which is a kind of a flexible end post. So in the software we use um, a conservative approach that is using a non-rigid end post for calculating the slenderness. Eta is uh, taken as 1.2. Um, should be cross checked with the national annex. Okay. So, based on this uh, lambda or slenderness value, we get a reduction factor which is then used for calculating web buckling resistance. Okay. Now, web buckling resistance uh, again uh, depends uh, on whether we have considered, uh, um, I mean, as, as shown in this. Uh, a formula over here, uh, the the slenderness ratio depends on on an on a factor called k tau. This k value is used is calculated uh, based on the spa uh, spacing of the transverse stiffener and the panel that we are considering. So if you have a web like this, okay, which has got longitudinal stiffeners and transverse stiffeners, okay. Again, as I men as mentioned in the previous slide, you can have a rigid transverse stiffener or a non-rigid or flexible kind of transverse stiffener. Uh, in such scenarios, you can divide the split of the web into different panels. Okay, now each panel should be uh, sh should be uh, giving you uh, a slenderness ratio. So each panel has a different slenderness ratio. Uh, the worst slenderness ratio, the minimum, uh, uh, the of the one which will give you the maximum slenderness is the one that you are going to uh, use for the shear buckling calculation. Okay. So, how do we consider that? First of all, we need to uh, cal uh, find out how many stiffeners or uh, longitudinal stiffeners are there. Okay. Now, within the software, we do not use the uh, longitudinal stiffeners as in the calculation. So, by effect, uh, the first category is what we consider which is 0 longitudinal stiffener. Okay. So, for 0 longitudinal stiffener, we uh, calculate the ratio of A by H W. Uh, A by H W is A is the pitch or the spacing of the transverse stiffener. So, one panel, suppose this panel uh, is that I am talking about, just ignore the longitudinal stiffener. So, we got one panel. So, A will be the spacing between two uh, tra transverse stiffener or the width uh, length of the panel and H W will be the height of the panel. So, if you are considering that there is a longitudinal stiffener, then uh, 
uh, the height will be actually from up to the point where you have a longitudinal stiffener if you are considering one sub panel okay now be, uh, now once we have calculated a by hw based on the condition we will calculate k okay which is uh, for different cases uh, the equations are given okay and if the longitudinal stiffeners are considered and you are considering one full panel okay in that case we need to add the stiffener longitudinal stiffener uh, inertia as well in the, into the calculation okay so if you see there is a k um, ksl uh, term over here this is uh, calculated based on the moment of inertia of longitudinal stiffener uh, which varies based on a single stiffener or a two two sided stiffener as shown here okay so once you have calculated k k tau we can put it in this equation and calculate uh, lambda which is slenderness uh, again slenderness uh, calculation uh, in the software we use uh, the formula which is shown, shown here for transverse stiffeners at supports and intermediate transverse stiffener okay and put it back into this curve so whatever slenderness we get from there we put it back in this curve and which is used for calculating the shear buckling resistance okay so it's quite a uh, long uh, calculation process uh, which for the shear buckling resistance that we can save a lot of time using software here okay now in some cases where the transverse stiffeners are very close by um, the shear the shear vertical shear can also be resisted by um, the flange tension field that is created between the flanges okay like shown in this figure so if the web tries to uh, if, if there is a word the shear and the web tries to move uh, the flange uh, or the is spanning between these two transverse stiffeners and hence it can resist that uh, movement of the web and and take part part in the shear resistance effectively uh, although it doesn't the entire length of the flange doesn't participate there is an effective length which is calculated the c value which is calculated as per this formula shown here okay uh, and in to calculate the sh effective shear resistance given by the flange taken care by the flange we have to calculate the uh, the moment of resistance due to the flanges only okay so in order to do that uh, what we do is uh, remove say remove the web and simply consider that there are two flanges um, the mfrd is basically calculated as a plastic resistance so just the area of the flanges multiplied by um, the uh, this uh, the yield strength uh, the strength and which is then multiplied by the lever arm so you get mfrd and using that you calculate vfrd which takes care of your flange portion of uh, shear resistance okay let's have a look at the calculation okay so going back to shear resistance okay so shear area is calculated which is um, the height multiplied by thick thickness of the web okay and uh, then we have the plastic shear resistance calculated then uh, it checks for whether a shear buckling check is required or not which is required in this case so it moves on the next category which is uh, calculation of the slenderness lambda okay uh, so k tau is being calculated uh, again if uh, a by hw is less than 1 so this particular equation is used then based on that based on the graph uh, between uh, chi and lambda we get uh, some value of chi and then the shear resistance is finally calculated and um, adding to this web shear buckling resistance is the uh, the contribution from the flange so mfrd is calculated and then we get the vbrd plus vfrd which is the shear total shear buckling resistance uh, if the vd is less than that then it's okay all right moving on to the next check which is interaction of bending and shear now <coughs> if this category if this uh, criteria is fulfilled that is uh, applied shear is less than is greater than 50% of 
the shear resistance then we have to consider the interaction of bending and shear if it's less than 50 percent then we can just uh, treat shear and resistance and bending resistance separately and uh, and that's it so uh, so let's see how we can in, uh, combine the effect of bending in vertical shear okay now here we have two cases one is if you have a class one or two uh, section uh, where we essentially have plastic uh, capacities that are being used uh, if it if it's a class one and two section we just use a reduced uh, strength of steel uh, in the area where the shear is going to be resisted mostly so the web basically so if you see in this diagram you have used a reduction factor which is calculated using this equation and applied it with the fy um, in the web and based on that we recalculate our bending resistance uh, our section modulus and bending resistance and then that is uh, how we define a reduced bending resistance uh, in our calculation if it's a class 3 and 4 section we have to use elastic properties so in order to do that uh, we use this equation over here so eta 3 which is this value and eta 1 which is uh, med upon m um, plastic resistance uh, this is uh, if this satisfies uh, the equation shown here then uh, our combined bending and shear check is satisfied okay so uh, in summary uh, we have two types of checks that uh, we are doing here first is a check where we have a stiffened longitudinally stiffened plate element and a check second is the check where we have we don't have a longitudinal stiffener and again this in these two categories also we can treat shear and bending separately and we can treat them uh, as a combination based on the percentage of shear that is being uh, actually applied okay and now it, it for for the longitudinal stiffened plate elements we have seen that uh, we can use the st stiffener uh, effective stiffness longitudinal stiffness uh, uh, stiffness into the calculation of slenderness um, and also uh, we can in the case of a non stiffened web we can uh, perform the same uh, method of calculation the only difference will be uh, we have to use the right uh, right equation over here in the table uh, for zero longitudinal stiffness and we can be done with the shear check okay. now everywhere in the software we don't consider longitudinal stiffener in the calculation yet so wherever you have longitudinal stiffener if you want to be accurate we can you have to perform a separate hand check okay now what about flanges in uh, with longitudinal stiffeners uh, we've talked about the webs we do a similar check in the flanges too so what we do is uh, normally we'll have such kind of situation in a box girder okay so we calculate the direct stress in a box girder um, uh, and which uh, sigma which is use using actual force and moments okay and uh, then we calculate the slenderness uh, using the same curve that we have in the uh, in in for shear buckling of web okay uh, total shear stress is calculated in the flange uh, which is uh, uh, sum of the average shear in the flange plus the average torsional shear stress okay uh, again we have the two factors eta 1 and eta 3 uh, eta 1 is basically the ratio of direct stress upon the strength uh, yield strength of steel uh, and eta 3 is the shear stress applied shear stress divided by the chai multiplied by your shear strength of steel and that's how if this uh, equation is satisfied we have uh, the flange also okay with longitudinal stiffness okay now again this check is not performed in the software it has to be done uh, manually using excel sheets okay. to to facilitate this process uh, facilitate the process of uh, calculating the shear stress we can take the help of plate model because uh, in beam models it can be sometimes uh, uh, we can we might be underestimating the torsional um, moments that we are considering in analysis so uh, for a box girder uh, it's 
it's also recommended that you can use a finite element model. Let me show you uh, an example of how you can actually use a uh, finite element model uh, for box cutters. Okay, so we have a, a steel box cutter bridge over here. Uh, I'm going to just activate uh, just one of the girders. Active. Okay, so <coughs> here we have modeled uh, the box uh, basically as a plate element. Uh, we have the webs modeled as plate and flanges as plate elements. The top flange, however, is a beam element. So if I remove the deck portion on the top, Okay, so this is how it looks like. Uh, we've got the top flange as beam elements because it's not going to participate in the buckling or local effects anyways. Um, so we've got everything else as plates, including stiffness, diaphragms, etc. Uh, now we can extract forces per unit length or stresses directly. So in the plate forces, self weight, let's say MY for longitudinal direction apply and we have got the forces here similarly stresses can be calculated automatically so this i was talking about direct stress and shear stress which you can very easily get from here uh, using the sh plate stress values okay so these stresses you can extract and use in your model so you can just uh, activate the flange let's say if you're designing the flanges only. And use the stress values in the calculation. Okay. Now, another type of uh, check that we need to do is the combined bending and axial force. Okay. Uh, now, what happens is for, uh, uh, for class one and two sections, for example, if you have uh, uh, the plastic moment resistance that has been that is to be calculated uh, we tend we cannot ignore the fact that a part of that plastic capacity is also being utilized in resisting the actual force so like shown in the figure here we have uh, this type of a diagram stress distribution for uh, actual resistance uh, scenario and uh, this type of scenario for bending resistance now if we combine them we have a certain portion over here near the center centroid which is only going into actual resistance okay, so we need to remove that portion when we are actually calculating the plastic moment of resistance of the section since doing that can be little difficult because we can have different types of shapes like eye girder and uh, you can have box girder which are not as easy as rectangular box section so that can take consume a lot of time to uh, to come back and calculate, recalculate your section modulus, everything. So that's why the code has given some simplified um, equations for doing bending and axial resistance check, which is shown here. Okay, so if you have, if you satisfy this, then you're okay as long as it's less than one. For class three sections, uh, elastic properties has to be used. So only difference here will be that these things will all become elastic uh, in the notations, and for class four sections effective stiffness plus the uh, the extra moment because of the shift in the centroid so uh, actual force multiplied by the shift in the centroid has to be used okay if you want to include shear as well in this combined check then all you have to do is reduce the moment from the previous calculation so whatever we did over here okay uh, we just need to use uh, use a reduced uh, moment in our calculation so reduce stiffness, reduce moments. Okay, and if we want to consider actual plus bending for our elastic checks, okay, so that we can do by using this factor. So if actual force is present, the way we calculate the moments, uh, plastic moments, is uh, by multiplying it with this uh, ratio 
all right now now moving on to the next thing which is buckling resistance for compression members okay uh, again there are two parts of uh, two buckling two types of buckling calculation that we do one is for compression members uh, which is shown here a reduction factor multiplied by area times strength will give us the buckling capacity buckling resistance for class 1, 2 and 3 sections, this is the one which is used class 4 section effective area. Again this uh, reduced reduction factor is calculated based on buckling curves in the code. Uh, so we have some value of slenderness ratio and critical is the Euler buckling load uh, and using that we calculate lambda and put the lambda in a, some buckling curve based on the imperfection factor and we get the reduction factor from there chi and which is again which gives the buckling resistance similarly we have a chi for lateral torsion buckling so same process applies here the only difference is that instead of n critical we compare it with m critical which is critical bending moment uh, and and we ha this process is slightly complicated because uh, of a lot of uh, uh, f uh, factors being involved here k y and k z uh, which are given in more detail in the Eurocode 3 uh, and can be found in the Annex A. Okay, so let's look at uh, uh, how this has been calculated in the software. So I'm going back to the same sheet. Okay. <coughs> so you have got the interaction of combined resistance. Uh, combined bending and shear as I mentioned so since in this case it is the the applied shear is less than 50 percent of plastic shears so we don't need to do uh, reduce the bending moment for bending an axial compression member uh, KY and KZ have been calculated as per NX A and 6.3.1 of Eurocode 3 okay and put it in these equations um, since this, this value is greater than 1 this is why our uh, um, analysis is failing okay so we need to revisit this k y values okay most probably the um, the way the uh, the equivalent moment factor has been calculated we have to cross check uh, the equivalent uh, moment uh, factors uh, which we are using in the annex and then cross check uh, them again so that uh, we can have a pass over here okay now uh, I, I talked about the uh, lateral torsion buckling check in the software in, in the in the euro code which is generally uh, give identified for simply supported cases and also for u-frame type of structures if you have any other type of general structures then those checks would be very conservative to avoid that there is another clause in Eurocode which gives uh, general lateral torsion buckling check uh, this is based on a finite element approach so the way we do it is you have a chai factor over here uh, and an alpha factor okay so first thing is the alpha uh, the alpha ultimate which is a factor um, uh, which is calculated from this equation uh, so we have the actual resistance ratio and the moment resistance ratio uh, we use alpha ultimate to alpha ultimate value from here and then we calculate alpha crit alpha critical this is the one which uh, which we use the software for uh, we model the plate uh, model everything with plates and we done a buckling analysis check so here uh, coming back to the previous model which we had okay so here I have run a buckling analysis so buckling analysis we can do it uh, using the buckling analysis control in the software okay so we look at the buckling mode shape that's the one which uh, potentially shows um, lateral buckling of the top flange 
and we can take the critical load factor over here that is the value that we want alpha critical okay put it in this lambda and then from this lambda we uh, we cal back calculate the chi value using the same curves given for lateral buckling or lateral torsion buckling okay in the eurocode 3 so when we get that value of chi we put it over here compare it with this ratio uh, if it satisfies then we are okay with lateral torsion buckling check so we need we need not necessarily use uh, the formula which is given over here we can use this equation as well for general buckling check which is more uh, which gives more accurate results for all types of structures plus having said that uh, if we have a scenario which has uh, uh, some unusual type of steel sections and uh, let's say we have got plate models um, and we have got stresses not uh, not everything in absolute forces in that case we can use a simple one misses check which is given in Eurocode which is uh, um, basically a, a square sum of squares of uh, your normal stresses and this uh, using the shear stress just compare it with uh, uh, this particular value and and see if uh, it satisfies we are okay but however we have some restraint over here that is uh, we cannot consider local buckling in this case uh, and also uh, the effects of torsion and shear are kind of neglected uh, in this particular equation uh, the eurocode also specifies another set of equation to consider torsion and shear especially for box cutters we can use that uh, talking about box cutters, if you have uh, straight models for box cutters, then uh, to to do the checks that we mentioned earlier, like shear, bending, axial resistance, all those checks uh, which requires absolute forces, uh, we can extract those ab absolute forces from the software using resultant force feature. So let's say if we have a plate model, just open up the model again. so next we'll move on to fatigue strength well the model is still opening up right so we have the model over here so let me just show you quickly how we can extract uh, the f the absolute forces so let's just activate one set of cutters So we have a local direction force some option over here we can use polygon select maybe I'll remove the deck make it inactive right so just create a, a polygon around it and calculate so it calculates the equivalent neutral axis and all the forces around that neutral axis we can name it some value some section name and select the section parts okay and then uh, we can just use those section parts uh, to extract tabular results um, in excel and do hand calculations uh, on them or if you have uh, uh, a standard box section or standard I section modeled in Midas you can just put a cantilever type of section put some forces at the ends and cal just do a quick design check in the software itself and get all those results in now fatigue strength is something which we cannot handle using the software directly so we need to use uh, you need to use some um, hand checks normally we do fatigue checks on fatigue load models 3 and load model 71 for road and rail bridges uh, the way we do this is that uh, the code has suggested some stress range direct stress range for some million cycles of uh, live load running on a bridge so <coughs> we call this uh, stress range as sigma delta sigma c or delta tau c okay um, the stresses the equivalent uh, stresses that we obtain so whatever stress we obtain on these load models they are multiplied with 
some uh, gamma f factors um, and to convert them into a fatigue type of equivalent stress and these uh, factors are compared with uh, uh, are, are, uh, are then compared with uh, some other parameters like damage life and uh, the length of the structure etc. So this lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 are all different factors uh, uh, which, cover, which, cover, which take part in the fatigue strength of the structure. Uh, so these are considered as per the code um, and used. So it's a simple uh, comparison of the equivalent stress in fatigue, stress range, uh, difference between max and minimum stresses in fatigue and compare it with the direct stress that uh, is will act as the resistance for, uh, for fatigue. Then move on to connection design. Connections can be of two types. It can be connections made of bolts, rivets, pins, um, where we check shear, bearing, tension, and punching shear resistance. So pretty much simple checks. All we need is the shear force or uh, the bearing force acting on those connections. So shear force we can extract uh, easily from the structure. If it's a plate model, we use uh, the resultant function. If it's a line model, it's straightforward anyways. Uh, and uh, for welded connections, uh, we basically resolve the forces in along the longitudinal and transverse direction of the weld. Okay, so we have the weld angle and uh, uh, the um, the dimension, the size of the, uh, the width of the weld, which is A. Compare it with the weld strength, and that's how the weld connection is designed. That's why. I mentioned that in case of line models or village models is, is extremely important and also in case of plate models it's important that for every splice uh, we have got sufficient nodes in to extract these forces. So that brings us to the last topic which is the serviceability checks. Uh, now here deflection checks are covered automatically by the software. So if I take you to the detailed sheet which has been generated. The deflection check is done as per the criteria that we um, that we uh, mentioned earlier uh, l by 250 for beams l by 300 for columns and the stress checks you have to do manually uh, is uh, it's something which has been uh, which you can do for composite steel sections uh, within the software package which will uh, which we'll discuss in upcoming webinars on composite steel bridges uh, but you can do this check easily uh, manually if you have uh, you can calculate the actual stress uh, the normal stress and the shear stress and do a von Mises type of check another type of serviceability check is the uh, is the uh, the check on the due to vibrations so that is something that we will uh, will be dealing with in foot bridges uh, where we actually check the acceleration generated on the bridge whether it's suitable for human uh, in or human uh, criteria or not okay so that uh, brings us to the end of the presentation uh, I hope I uh, was able to cover most of the aspects of uh, steel bridge design there are of course other scenarios like flange, flange uh, uh, induced buckling uh, and uh, also imperfections uh, in second order analysis which I have uh, 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 not been able to cover in this session because of time constraint uh, but again uh, those are checks which we uh, normally use for a more detailed analysis so uh, in this particular uh, webinar we have summarized the the important aspects of uh, design of steel bridges uh, steel bridges if you have any questions you can always write to uk support at mydesuser.com and uh, please feel free to ask any questions to my desk support team thank you very much and bye for now